Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Margot Minardi, and thank you to those of you who either stayed up late or woke up really early um, to be here. I um, mostly work on American history um, before um, the Civil War period. Um, my own personal interests lie primarily in the period between the American Revolution and the Civil War, which we call the Early Republic. Um, and I am particularly interested in um, the social movements of that period. Uh, my name is Douglas Fix, and I teach uh, both in the history department and in our uh, collective Chinese humanities course, which is a two-semester course, and I'll say a little bit about that in just a second. Uh, I teach uh, primarily uh, Chinese courses that deal with the early modern period as well as the modern period. I, I range both of those, but I also have classes on on Japan, uh, primarily because my uh, some of my early research interests uh, dealt with the Japanese colonial period in Taiwan, and so I do teach Japanese courses too. My uh, interests, though, uh, on Taiwanese history do span very, quite broadly. Uh, I've done work on cartography by the uh, British Maritime Service. Uh, I've uh, uh, done a lot of recent work on photography by a lot of different individuals, Chinese, uh, those coming from multi-ethnic backgrounds and also a lot of uh, European and American photographers. For this fall, I'm working on revising a class that I'll be teaching for the second time. Um, this is a class called Race and the Law in American History. Um, it's a history department class, but it's also um, cross-listed with our Comparative Race and Ethnicity Studies program. Um, and that's a course that looks across a longer period of American history, basically from um, colonial British America to the very recent past, um, and thinks about how the law has been a means both of um, confirming white supremacy in the U.S. and a means that some people have tried to use to challenge white supremacy in the U.S. We spend a significant amount of time looking at the Supreme Court as an institution and um, we read some of the landmark Supreme Court cases that have to do with race. Um, so in the second part of the semester, students develop a um, digital exhibit um, uh, revolving around the Supreme Court case um, where they um, kind of read different historical uh, trends out of that um, Supreme Court case. My other course uh, is quite different from that. It's a course that, uh, the, the other one that I want to mention to you, and it's a new course that I developed a couple years ago and had a very exciting uh, group of students from a lot of different majors uh, take that course. It's a course on rice in East Asia. And we started with the very early uh, historiography and archeology span on rice growing uh, in East Asia, beginning in China and certainly spreading out from different uh, parts of southern China uh, into the rest of East Asia. Uh, we looked at uh, some imagery that dealt with not only technology, but the social and cultural aspects associated with uh, rice. Of course, we uh, actually tasted different kinds of rice, uh, which is important for any course on a, a foodways um, um, topic. But we also then uh, actually did a lot of work with cuisine uh, in terms of different kinds of rice products, uh, why those were important. Uh, and then uh, students actually uh, did a uh, presentation on topics. And most of those actually dealt with the food cuisine and not other things. The second semester is devoted to what we now call early modern uh, China. And uh, this might surprise you, but it's actually the Song Dynasty, which would range from the uh, 10th century all the way to the 13th century. And in that particular uh, course, we're developing uh, different aspects that would lead to new uh, literary um, genres. Uh, we have a, 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 a full week on um, travel writing that allows us to uh, look at that new developing genre, as well as uh, cartography that's related to it. Uh, we have uh, several different ways of thinking about art in that particular course, and one of them is the monumental landscape paintings that is uh, really uh, very well known in, I think, throughout the world uh, for that particular period. We have uh, a very unique uh, document that uh, no one else in the world has. We have a digital copy of the uh, uh, Qingming Shanghe Tu, which is the cityscape of the capital city of northern uh, China uh, during the Song Dynasty period. And it allows students then to look at uh, that particular cityscape 
um, that is only about a foot tall, but we can expand it out so you can see even the very smallest little figure uh, on, the, on that particular document. I've got a lot of students who go on to law school, a student who's currently studying to be a social worker, a librarian, uh, teachers. So um, some of these are more or less related to being a history major, but a lot of these are professions where um, being able to do research, to be able to play, pay close attention to source material, whether it's source material in writing or a human being talking to you, um, is, is really um, a helpful skill set to have. So at some level, one of the nice things about um, Reed is if, is if you're trying to decide between history um, and political science, our curriculum is structured such that um, we have requirements in the history department that overlap with some of the requirements in political science. So if you're interested in both, I would just suggest that early on you take a couple history classes, you take a couple of political science classes, and you'll be able to count those as part of your overall requirements for either program. We have a significant event every year um, that is a, um, where we bring a guest scholar to campus mm -hmm. um, with funds provided by one of our um, uh, late graduates. But that's a really nice opportunity to bring the department together. There's usually an opportunity for students to have lunch with that speaker and ask them questions about their research and their career, as well as having that scholar give um, a public lecture. Um, and we often have other um, visiting scholars or special events that are sort of tied into um, the particular classes that um, any of us is teaching um, in, in a given year.